<laughs> okay, we're going to get started now. Uh, Peter's not able to be here this morning, uh, but I wanted to get things started off. Our next meeting in May is going to be at the Meadowdale Library in Chesterfield. And it's on May 8th. And the one after that will be back at the Tuckahoe Library on June 12th. Okay. As far as photo shoots, uh, next Monday morning at 9 o'clock, Louis Ginter, for anybody who's interested. And if anybody wants to go and doesn't have a membership, I've got my membership will get four people in. And I've got some uh, passes also. So if anybody needs that, let me know. That's oh, the 17th, right? Yeah, that's the 17th. We'll meet in the entryway at 9 o'clock when they open. And I'll probably be out there earlier than that. Um, as, and let's see. Sue, did you have any uh, um, Yeah, just a couple of quick announcements. We've had requests for uh, bringing snacks and some eatables at some of our meetings. So we are always going to be looking for volunteers, and I haven't worked it out with Ray. So oh, I need to take the audio. Take the audio. Do you want to make sure okay. that you want to make sure that you want to make sure that let me know. Should I turn it? Just take a second. And the other thing is we've had a request to have a program on how to use the flash. Not just the flash, the inbuilt flash on a camera, but an external flash. Not necessarily the big strobes and the umbrellas. But I, if you're like me, I try to avoid using the flash because I'm not sure how to use TTL or M or exposure one, two, three, or how to use it and the white light and all of that good stuff. So we've had requests for that. I already have um, a contact. I will be reaching out. But if you know someone, let me know. And if there are other program ideas that you would like to see happen, if something you want to review, we could do a table talk, maybe just break up in small groups. We've had requests to do that as well. Okay, so uh, that's it in terms of programming. Should we just go right into yeah. it? Yes, anybody else have any? Um... Well, first of all, Nancy Fine very nicely uh, is donating this brand new camera carrier. And um, she, you got a new one or something, Nancy? Or I got a new camera and that came with it. So if anybody wants it, ooh, it's yours. This this is very nice. And I've got it on the desk back here. Needs a new home. And um, just a reminder, um, I'm going to be out of town starting on Friday, uh, which means the newsletter is going to be a uh, problem because I'll be gone for the last two weeks of the month. So if anybody has any pictures, and please, I hope you do, that you can send to contribute toward the, the uh, May newsletter, which is what I'm working on now, um, please send them to me as soon as possible, because I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of work every day on the newsletter this week before I leave. So please, please, please. And just by looking at the past newsletters, you know what categories uh, to, to uh uh, attach your photos to, et cetera. So thank you and hope to get your pictures. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Are we doing a light ray show this year? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You mean like the November exhibit? Yeah. Okay. What are we going to do? Sure. We'll check it out. We're going to buy Peter and I'm, or he may already know. So we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. okay. Anything else? Anybody yeah, else? Yeah, I do have one thing. Yes. I will not be at the May meeting either. Uh, and so if you want to have photo share, I can loan the laptop to somebody else and they can handle the photo share or we just skip it, whatever we want, whatever we want. So to do photo show at that library, I mean, would anybody just bring, I mean, if I brought my laptop. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could bring your laptop. It, 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 you know, it doesn't yeah. matter because you can, anybody can connect up to the, the overhead. Okay. It's just, you just need the HDMI cable. 
Okay, I could I could do that. Okay, I can arrange that. Jim, did you say for the May meeting? The May meeting, I will not be there. So and so you would need to send your send your photo share to Tom then if, if yeah. Tom's gonna have we wouldn't be doing Zoom that. Right. That one, that right. Be well, that's I, we have a guest speaker for digitizing and organizing your Philip. Philip, yeah. Well and he's coming, he's he's gonna be in person. Okay. So we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll just have uh, to go with you, right? Well, and, and there's a possibility we could probably do Zoom if if you wanted to, you know, I can start up, I'll, I'll be up in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. at a campground. I can <laughs> start it probably if if nothing else, I can use my my phone as a hotspot and get yeah. the meeting started. Once I get it started, I can make you the host of it and then yeah. you can go ahead and carry on and you can record it up to the, the cloud and I can get it back when okay. I get back. Okay. So if you want still do it with Zoom, we can do that. Well, all I gotta do is start once I get started, I hand off the host to somebody else and it works right. How how remote is this campsite? <laughs> it's uh cell it's service up in the up in the in the mountains. It's uh northeast of uh Harrisburg. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll have <laughs> cell service. Cell service. Right. It's, it's not too far from Interstate 81, so yeah. I mean, equip you with a satellite phone or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's next. Okay. 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 First of all, happy Easter, happy Passover, happy Monday. Our guest presenter for today is Anne Savage. With a bachelor's from James Madison University and a master's from VCU, Anne has been an educator for many years. And as she has told me personally and other students, she just loves to teach because then someone else learns something. Her photography has been on display in China, Brazil, London, Austria, and in South Korea. Closer to home, she has exhibited in New York, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Vermont, and all over Virginia, including the Chrysler Museum in Norfolk and the Taubman Museum of Art in Roma. She's even in Wikipedia. Currently, she teaches photography and Photoshop at Wright Point Community College, which is formerly John Tyler. Several of our club members have taken a class or two with Anne, Ray, Lane, Bill, myself um, at the college. Please welcome Anne Savage as she teaches us how to restore old photos using Photoshop. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> It's so good to see you guys. I'm I'm always happy to see my former students as well. And I wanted to say thank you for allowing me to join you last month for the copyright um, guy. I teach copyright, as a matter of fact. And what I wanted to hear was what he had to say that I might not know. And basically, if you're interested, I have a um, PowerPoint. Yeah, I have a PowerPoint that was given me by a printing uh, company and it was 2006, but it's still the right information. And there's a chart on it that tells you when, what year things were in effect and uh, after what year things are in public domain and things like that. And it also, and one of the things I realized that he, um, he didn't cover because even though he was a lawyer is it gives it gives law it gives people that have gone to court on things and whether it was settled who won who lost and and uh i totally don't agree with all of them but i can send it to sue if uh, you might actually have it but i can send it to sue if you guys are interested in having it um if you watch it don't play it, look at the notes underneath each of the, um, the windows because the notes tell you more information. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to share that with you. It's uh, I te because I teach Photoshop and I don't allow my students to use anybody else's work. And if they use public domain, we have to know it is public domain. So one of the things I give them to do is from uh, NASA and NOAA, and the Hubble and the James Webb, one of my favorite projects to get into. Uh, okay, so, oh God, 
I, I need to share. How do I do that? Um, go ahead and bring up the presentation. <laughs> you know, to decide what they want to do. I don't think this is working in here. Okay. Um, bring up the pre. Oh, I'm just going to do Photoshop. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So now you're you're zooming in. Let me have that. So I guess we're going to. It was on the web. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Have you given me permission to share? Do you have? I'm sorry, people. We we can't figure out how to make it share because mine tells me I have to update my web my um and it won't let me update. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one we That's what I said. I had to. I just and I brought my laptop, but it's not back over there. Um, if you have Photoshop in it, um, I just need to get my file. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> and my mouse <laughs> Technology people. <laughs> <laughs> I have put mine's not a macro. The Photoshop should be close enough. You need your, you need to copy your file off. Let's just go to the I can't find it. Um, I'm currently taking a class over at Jay Sarge. It says history of Western Civ. Oh, so now. Um, and I've been taking classes at John Tyler or Jay Sarge. And I was just talking to Leo because it's great for those young people to have a perspective, a different perspective of a different student who's there, but they're so good in technology. Um, whenever I, I can't figure out something, and they come and it's great. So because um, the first time I ever used an app was an app class. I had no clue. A big screen, I didn't even know. So all of these other kids, I think they just got five one me. <laughs> you know how that is. But um, I was just telling Leo also, you can take classes uh, for free, even at BCU if you wanted to. Um, but you have to look at the criteria. It's a certain income or if you wanted credits or not, that kind of thing. Um, I drove down to BCU one time and I couldn't find a parking space. So it's like, I am not taking class. So Jay Sarge was right down right here on camera, or any of the campuses really. And that's just how I met Anne because I went over to John Tyler. John Tyler is the one that has really the photography, the arts, more of the arts emphasis than Jay Sarge. And I think it's because they like it spread it around in the community system, the community college system. So it's a little longer of a drive, but it was great. I took the Photoshop and digital one and two. And Anne also teaches her students who are going for the certification, um, I think, how to do their portfolio. They get an actual, she can explain it more, but okay. she makes us do, them do a website. You know, everything works at home, you know. Sorry. We're Excuse changing me. computers. Okay. <laughs>
should probably and if you log on to the Zoom. Uh, no, but I should run away. Yeah. Okay, we're we're getting there. I need to log on to the Zoom. Where's the Zoom? And I think I did. Um, yeah. We're getting set out up there. Um, some of them are not back here on the table. Oh, that's mine, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, I won't. Well, I'll let you use the soft. No, y'all talk. Next year, we're starting seven classes, but most of the archives are in case I have taken them. And it will start on the last week of the And then the second one is going to start on the last the end of the middle of the and share Almost there. I do. You got to turn your sound off somewhere. That's fine. I'm, I'm all right. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
Our mic would be good. Yeah. No wonder it can't keep going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just, for some reason, it, it, oh, I hit cancel instead of open. Come on. All right. So, those of you who've taken my class, you probably remember this, and I'm going to do this first. This is the way I've always taught restoration, but there's some new stuff that has just come out in the last year, and I'm going to show you that as well. So um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, how do I, how do I get rid of this? This thing right here. Oh, I see. Never mind. All right. Um, okay. So just for information, um, and I don't know how many of you scan old photographs. It's what we usually do. And when you scan something, you should always scan it with a high resolution. Um, this one is a fairly small picture. I think it's my father in the CCC camps. He was a teenager because um, it's not a military uh, uniform. I think it's CCC camps. Anyway, um, when you scan, it can come up crooked like that. So you need to fix it. The other thing about scanning is you need to realize the bigger, the more resolution you give it, the more you're going to see the texture of the paper that it's on. So you've got to work with that. You can't ignore it. You can't say, oh, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to blur everything out. And then you have part of the texture and part none of the texture. So you've got to use your, you've got to use what you know. Okay. So for this one, what I do, there's a couple of ways. There's a thing under, um, oh, shoot, there's an automate. Is it automate or it must be scripts um, that will correct it? But I, I'm, I'm one, the kind of person that likes to do it myself. And the cool thing you've got in uh, the cropping tool, you can you can rotate it around, uh, pull it in and here. And you, I'm doing that because. I want this edge here. If I use the script, it takes it out. So the first thing I want to do is just straighten it and crop it. That was an easy thing to do. And I'm not going to... Um... <laughs> Sorry. Um... Okay. Oops, that's... Some of it works. Uh, I'm not going to correct it all. I'm just going to show you a couple of things you can do. Uh, I like to use, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, um, every, every program has a clone, but this has four different uh, other clone tools. And I want to go to this patch tool right here, which works like a selection tool. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to select. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. I should have done this on Zoom from home and used my desktop. All right, so I'm selecting just the center of this. I'm pulling it down. And you see how I got rid of that scratch there. All right, um, if you've got an edge and you're using the patch tool, you have to go across the edge. And then I think you can hold shift and just, no, you can't. Okay, just pull it down and make sure that you've got it so it's right there at the same place. Do you see what I'm doing there? Uh, and it didn't work. Why not? Yeah, there you go. So you see how if I do, if I do it with the edge, if I do it right to the edge of where it touches, it makes a blur. So you, you would go over and you touch the edge and it blurs into it. You see what it does? So you've got to make sure if you've got a scratch that goes right to the edge that you, that you find another edge that fits. Hope that makes sense. You're recording this so you can go back and look at it. The other place I want to show you, sorry.
in the wrong thing, is, is yeah. just how you use this patch tool to correct something like this. So this is an old photograph and I really wanna keep, I want this border around it, what, what I'm looking at. So I'm just selecting it with the patch tool and I'm gonna look at where the patch tool goes across at this point. And then I'm gonna pull it down and match that point right there and match the line. And you see what I did. Now with the patch tool to order, in order to do that on the option bar at the top, you have to have it on source. Source will, what it does is it replaces the, it, you select what you want to replace and then you move it. And you can see, what I like about it is you can actually see what you're putting in there when you change that. So that works really well. The other thing I do with this image, um, okay, I got it. I'm, I'm, Okay, the other thing I do with this image is I, I correct the uh, color. I'm not going to go and I'm not going to clean this whole thing up, but I just want to show you that. Um, and to correct the color, I go to uh, the adjustment layers. I use adjustment layers. I don't like to destroy an image. I like to keep the pixels. And also, I always tell my students, please, once you do something to a file, save it with a different name. I'm an old film person. I've been doing photography since 1968 um, and started with a two and a quarter twin lens reflex film camera. And uh, so I, you know, I think in terms of what I would do in the dark room when I clean things up basically. Uh, so also I think in terms of keeping the original negative. And to me, the original file is like your original negative. That's my point. So I've gotten the, um, I, I use levels, uh, levels because on your camera, your cameras all have histograms on them. And you can see, um, if you don't recognize this, this is the white pixels, the middle gray pixels, and the black pixels. And this tells you how many pixels that you literally have in your file. So what I do is I go over here to the eyedropper and there's ways you can find out, but I, I want this border to be white. So I'm just gonna go to the border and I'm gonna click on it with the white. And then I'm gonna get the black eyedropper and I'm gonna go in the um, door and click on that. And that gave, gives me the um, contrast, yeah. And could you could you go back to how you did that white? How you made oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I showed you the, the levels. I showed you the what the uh, histogram does, but it's a, a eyedropper on the side. So let me undo, go back to history. When they came up with history and, and levels and undo, not levels, they've had this forever, but layers. Um, honestly, people, when I started Photoshop, okay, here it is. New levels layer, okay. So let me move this. Um, I get this is the white eyedropper here, and to know where the original, the first whites are, um, I what I do is I hold I think Control or Command, and I drag. No, it's Option. It's Alt. Okay, I drag. Yeah, this shows me where the first white is. You see that? And the same thing, you hold Alt or Option, and you drag this where the first black is. Um, so I used the white eyedropper here, and I went in this here to make the white. And then I used the black eyedropper to go in the black. Um, the medium gray works for neutrals. You've got to be kind of careful with it and change the color. So I don't usually use that one. But you see how I now have an adjustment layer um, on my uh, photograph, Photoshop, on my photograph. Uh, the other thing I may or may not do is go back to adjustment layers, and I like to go to the <laughs> black and white, and I use the tint, and look at this, I can go in and I can give it a, like a sepia. And this is a good way to do, if you've got stains on your pictures, it will just neutralize where the stains are. Then you can go in and color on top of that if you want, or just leave it sepia. This was a sepia photograph, so it works for this. Does, does this make sense to you guys? Have I? Does anybody want me to show you this again? Because I'm moving it up. Okay, 
So the next one I'm going to show you is um, this one that, that was really, really discolored. Um, and some of you might be old enough to remember the 70s when yeah, all the color know. faded. <laughs> um, what happened is Fuji had this great color negative film and Kodak wanted to, to compete with them. So they came up with, um, they had Kodachrome 25, but they came up with um, their color film. I forgot now what it was. Ectochrome. At, no, not, I'm talking about a negative film. Oh. Um, so whatever it was. And uh, it faded, it faded, it was not stable. And not only did the negatives fade, but the, the pictures faded. This is similar to one of, this is what happened. The, the color that came out either like green or red, generally red. Um, yeah, a lot of wedding photographers got sued over that. Uh, Kodak figured out what to do. So this is, um, the first thing you look, of course, is you see how red it is. And um, so I'm going to go to the adjustments layer. I'm going to get my levels. And I'm going to look at the channels okay you guys the channels are red green and blue you see that so i'm going to look at each of the channels on the levels i'm going to go to red and red doesn't seem to have much but i can pull it in a little now i'm going to go to green green you see where it's flat there's there's no pixels no green pixels there so i'm going to pull that white over and you see it looks all green but don't panic okay now i'm going to go to blue and I'm going to pull the blue over, maybe if I get it. And look what happened. All right, so I can go back to red and maybe I might want to like warm it up a little, just a little, just a little. Um, what I'm looking at here is kind of the skin tone. The, I, I don't care too much for, there's still a lot of red in there. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to go back to the background, select it, Get my favorite selection tool, which is the quick selection tool. Um, and I'm going to do his shirt. Now, the woman who gave me this picture, she had taken a bunch of them to Richmond camera and they charged her a lot of money and did crack work. She brought them to me. I gave them to my students and we, we restored them for her. Um, so I use, I use them for my lessons now. So anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to adjustments. Now there are a couple of places I can go here. This is the hue and saturation, which lets you colorize. And what she told me when she gave me these pictures is this: all of her three children wore different color school pictures every year, and this young man wore red. So we're going to go and make his shirt red. Come on, give me red. Give me red. Oops. I guess I better turn the saturation on. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave him a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave him just a, a little bit burgundy. Now, the other thing I, you know, if you don't, there are six ways to do everything in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you one more just because, and that is the first thing I used to do, and that would be to go to the, I call this the black and white cookie on the bottom, and choose solid color. And then I can go into the solid color and choose whatever color I want. Okay, but I, I missed something. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have to select a shirt. <laughs> All right, I, I did that. So now I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to the, where I call the black and white cookie, get a solid color, right. And then I'm going to choose the red. And I'm just see, I'm just, I kind of like this because you can move it around and see what the color is going to be and say okay, and then go here to the um, blending modes, and I'm just gonna go down and choose color. So that works as well. You have, and there's just like five more things you can do to give you that, I'm just showing you the two. The one I just showed you with the um, color fill is what I used to do, and then I started doing other things. <laughs> I, get, I, I, I don't stay at the same place. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is I wanna go to the bottom, background layer, you see that? And I want to um, I want to color the background because I don't want it to have that red to it. So I'm just gonna select the background and I can do any of these things. Uh, I just showed you, I showed you how to use the black and white. I showed you how to use the hue and saturation. 
and I showed you how to use the uh, solid color adjustment layer, uh, which is, I think, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to choose like a really pale blue. It's a really pale blue. And then again, I'm going back and choosing the color for blending mode. And you see how I kept the texture of the background in there. Now you look at it and you say, okay, is the skin okay? Is the hair okay? That's important. That's like the first thing you need to look at is make sure you've got the skin tones that you want. Um, I'm saying we could, we could do something with him. Um, let me get his, it, it, he looks better on my screen. Yeah, he, the, the he looks much better on the screen than he does. The is yeah. off so I'm just going to get his face. I'm just going to get his face. And I'm going to go to the um, photo filter. And you guys, any of you ever use photo filters with films? Do you use the warm, the um, ADA and all that? That's what this is. It's exactly that. And you can go in and choose a warming filter and, uh, you know, see how you like it. You can pull the density up a little. Um, and then the last thing I like to do is I want to, I, I, his lips are kind of purple and I don't like that. So I go back, I get the photo filter, I get a warming filter. And uh, yeah. So did it do anything? Yeah, a little bit. You don't want you don't want to do a whole lot. So the photo filters are very, very subtle. They're not really harsh. You can raise the you can raise the um, density of them. So if I go to this one, I can and look at this face. I'm gonna pull the density all the way up. Even oops, then pull a little bit. See, so you again, it's it's you what what looks right for you what's right for you and this picture was in color but it went by the time it came to me the color was was no good so um that's why i like to use this one because it's an old picture done um faded away and and this is actually the first lesson i teach my restoration people what i just did so what is the new stuff what has happened in photoshop that has changed the way we do things. Um, oh, I've got two of these. I need to open it. Okay. Um, How do you save that? You said you save it under a different name. Oh, uh, if I if I, I just would so I force my students and I count them off if they don't to to save it last name first name project name. Um, in my files, I save everything with the date and what the project is. Uh, for this one, though, I probably would just call it six restoration or something like that. You just go to files or oh, okay, yeah, okay. Let minutes. me show you that. So I'm going to go to add, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to always say that. It's never hit save. Never ever hit save. Wow. Never because you can save over something that you want to not change. I mean, honestly, always do save as. Then you can go up to, um, all right, right. Again, right here, it says six PSD, so I can call it um, six. It would help with a headline, sorry. <laughs> E-S-T-O-R-D-T. All right, I would just call it six restoration, and this is a Photoshop file. So Photoshop file is all well and good, but only if you're going to open it in Photoshop. So, um, all right, they don't like my. I'm not going to save it on there um, because it won't let me drive. The other thing, though, I might want to do is I might want to save a JPEG, and a JPEG, as you probably know. Um, is what you need to upload on Facebook or Instagram or put on a website. You can't put a PSD file in there. So what you want to do in Photoshop is you want to hit save a copy and then you can choose JPEG and you can save it. See if it'll go to the drive. Oh, okay, it went. Um, and the image, the quality. I go by the size of the file, and this one is not very big, and this is a 10, so I might want to go down to a 10 or a 7, just because it makes the file a little smaller. Um, I'd like to do this, so I'm changing your, I'd like to see the document size here, 
So this is eight megabytes. It's a very small file. But if I want to um, go to file and save as, um, and I want to do a JPEG, what I want to show you is when you come up here with the, these are the ways it compresses. And back in the day when I first started Photoshop, and by the way, I did Photoshop in 1993, 2.0, no layers, no layers at all. I went up to Maine and took a workshop with Kumar, and then the next week they closed down because they found out you had to get update computers and software to do it. The first digital camera, it was a, um, a Nikon camera with a Kodak back and did 640 by 480 images. That was where I started. <laughs> Yeah, we've come a long way. Uh, but baseline standard or baseline optimized is good. Don't use progressive. That's like when it slowly um, starts to show up, you know, like when you're on a website and, and the image is building more. And we've gotten faster than that now. We don't seem, I, I've never changed. I'm, if you do progressive, it might not work for other things. Is what I'm saying. So don't do it. My recommendation. Did that help? Did that make sense to you? Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I I do that with my students always. I, I get them through and tell them how to save it, and then they have to upload it. We work on Canvas uh, in class, so that's how I grade their book. All right, so it's just going to go to go to her, my grandma. This is my grandma. Um, so this is a black and white picture, and in the old days, my cousin had it, and I made copies of it, and I hand colored it. And the scratches on it, I took a little teeny fine tip brush and, you know, spotted it. So now look at this. This is what we can do now. I'm going to go to filter, neural filters. Anybody ever use the neural filters? This is brand new stuff, just came out. So the neural filters, we're going to go down to this one, which is photo, and I have to download it. It'll take a few minutes, sorry. Um, and you see, it's like photo restore, restore old photos. It is a program that will take the scratches out. I know. Now it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. You, know, you have you guys see the ad for the new and Android that says we can take people out of your pictures. Be aware that they can take them out when the background is the same as what's in there. But if they take them out and there's something different in the background, you can have some weird things happen. I don't have an Android. I haven't done that, but I know what happens in this program when you you can use that. Um, patch tool I showed you and move it over and you can end up with weird things. And, and nothing wrong with weird things because honestly, I do weird things. Oh, shoot. Sorry, people. All right, well, that one is, the other one is a colorized filter. I don't know if we can download both of them at once or not. Yeah, the other one I want to show you is the colorized filter. So. I suspect this, this is why it costs a lot of money to go somewhere and say, can you restore these old photos? I mean, yeah, you know, I, I mean, a lot it's, of it's good to know how to do it. And it's really a challenge. I mean, people send me photographs all the time and say, can you do this and can you do that? And I look at it and go, yeah, I can, but I'm not gonna. Or, yeah, I want, I want to practice. Um, so I, if you ever send me a picture, you might end up being a lesson, like, <laughs> like a boy in a red picture, uh, because it's it's just really nice to have something that people have had to you know work with. <laughs> um, while this is going on, and I'm, I think it's I'm sorry, I'm sorry you guys have to deal is with this technology. Is filter just a Photoshop thing? Sorry, is this neural filter of Photoshop? Yeah, they're in my Photoshop and I'm just downloading them and um it's in the the well whatever the newest version is in cloud. You know. Um and I think they're about a year, maybe a year and a half old. The first ones I learned to do, oh, oh there's um 
but these are the ones. Uh, in fact, what happened is my lab assistant came in one day and said, have you tried the um, restoration of the neural filters? And I went, the what? Huh? <laughs> and I went immediately and learned to do it. So, you know, like I said, Sue said, I like to teach people, but teaching you makes me keep up with this program, really. So once you download this filter, do you have it or do you have it? You have, it. yeah, and and you see, there's a little thing that you click on. She has a couple of them. Oh, I see. Color transfer, so, JPEG so, artifacts. Yeah. yeah, so you turn it on, and it has uh, sliders where you can control. So on this one, one of the sliders is to um, do the face, and I don't, I don't generally want to do the face in the old photographs. It, it make, you know, it's like it makes you look pretty. Um, I have one, and I did it on my niece, my uh, baby picture of my niece, and it just, you know, she's a baby, and I didn't even use her face, and it made it glow a little bit, but it looked, it looked artificial to me, that's what I'm saying. Too um, so, sorry. And once this is downloaded, I don't need to download it again. No, you won't. You know, you'll have it. Great. Thank you. Uh, quick question. I've used the neural filters for Have you? Uh -huh. Two years. And it's great. Uh, I particularly enjoy the, uh, oh, what is it, style transfer? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah we, Where you can make it look like another painting uh, or something. And, yeah, yeah. But the only thing I had is, and I still got my written letter, if I have no response, is that when I close out, go back to the Photoshop, I get an overlay. Right. You you have an option uh, down at the bottom, current see or output a current layer or a, another layer or another uh, or yeah. Okay. So you have you might need to check the output. All right, I'll look at that. What happens is that I'll get the shot that I have altered laying over mm -hmm. the shot Original. that I have altered. Uh -huh. And then the computer goes into a wild run forever trying to figure it out. And uh, oh. but I'll look at what's wrong. Yeah, I hope it doesn't do that here. It doesn't do it on my computer. Yeah, okay. I, <laughs> I, I never mentioned it. Doesn't it won't do it here. But it's a great bunch of uh, it's a oh I know and, and I'll tell you another one that's really cool. My students love it. It's under edit. And it's sky replacement. Have you okay. tried that one? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, my God. You can put your own skies in, mm -hmm. and then you can put those skies in any any picture you've got. Mm -hmm. What's the question again while that's still in? It's, um, do you use Lightroom a lot, or do you, when you get your photos, you just go immediately? Or are just, I can download with Lightroom. I like that because you can download two different places, upload, whatever. You can take them off of your camera and put them on your file that you're going to work on and then I have my backup. So I always download it in two places. On um, so when you go to I guess it's upload at the very top it says uh, uh, upload to a second location. Is and that in Lightroom when you when you do it? Oh, like okay. Yeah. And always do copy. Always do copy. Never do any of the other things. You don't want to lose your files off from your memory card until you make sure you've got them where you want them to be. Um, this is spoken from somebody who's lost at least five hard drives. Mm -hmm. And just before Christmas, I lost my iMac, my 30, my 28 inch. I love that, that computer. They don't make them anymore. They make the smaller one. They don't make the big one. So I went and bought the studio. It's a Mac studio. I got 64 RAM. I got four terabytes of hard drive. <laughs> It has plug, it's ugly sin. I had to buy a lot. So it's a little box, right? And it has two USB C's on the front. It has four USB C's on the back, and I think two USB regulars. So I bought all those pigtails and stuck them in all the little and, and so there's this box, which is a really nice, powerful computer, and has all these pigtails sticking out so I can plug my USBs and my external. Hard drives. But the other thing that happened when I did that, you guys should be, you should have that. I have a program that backs up everything on my computer. It costs me 10 bucks a month. It's called Crash Plan. Um, you can only get it as a small business. So I told them I was a small business. 
um, when I lost my computer and I needed to work before I bought the new one, I used my husband's computer and I was able to restore some files onto an external drive and use them on his computer. Then when I bought the new one, I just went and clicked on the thing that said restore, put everything back. Everything. I mean, it's worth 10 bucks a month to me. 3.5 terabytes on my backup. I'm a photographer. I have big files. <laughs> I have some images that, oh, they're almost there. I have some images I've printed um, that are, I have a 24 inch um, Canon inkjet printer, and I print 24 by 50. They my big images. 50, 50 50. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't frame them. I, I try to talk the galleries into let me put them up with put them up with magnets because I can't afford those frames. Um, and they've been really good about that. You know, we're almost there. Did you? Well, maybe did, um, did you print all of you know? I saw a lot of large prints at the uh, what's the gallery which is at the Perfect. Have you guys been there? Do you ever meet in Chester? You meet you're meeting in Meadowbrook, Chester has this art center. You can meet in the art center. It's called the Parkinson Center for Art and Education. Okay. They have a, a, a auditorium that seats 300 and some people. I've been to a couple of performances there and they gave me a show and they have a gallery, the Baxter and Elaine Parkinson Gallery. And it's a very nice little gallery. And it's right by Thomas Hill. Yeah, and well, not, or it's near, near. It's near, it's actually right across from the Chester Library. The library is here, the art center is here. If you want to go and have a meeting, I would go to the art center. And the woman's name is Chelsea Bylos. Bylos. Oh, we got it. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I'm so full of it today. Okay, um, so I'm turned it on, and you see this says photo enhancement. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to pull the face down, and I'm going to pull the scratch all the way up. Okay, let's see. You see where it's processing down in the, oh, all right. Processing on device, you see that right, right here. So mm -hmm. I just want you to look at what it does. <laughs> this, was, this was under filters? Neural filters, N -E -R -A -M. N-E-U-R-A-M, neural filters. And, uh, So when you change things, it changes how it's processed. And have you used the restoration one? Have you used the restoration one? Not very much. Not very well, unless you're doing restoration, you might not. So I've been doing these new, uh, my husband's cousin had seen it in 30 years and he came and stayed with us um, and brought his photo albums. and. I went through his albums and I pulled out all the photographs of people sitting on cars. And his father used to buy a new car every two years. Oh, wow. And I started a whole new series. They're not all sitting on cars. Sometimes they're standing beside it. So I started a whole new series of images of people. It has to be people with cars, not just a car. Uh, and your website is AnnSavage.com, spelled oh, right. Yeah, AnnSavage.com. I show you stuff, but we need to see this happen, right? Oh, I should have. I don't think this is locally that does scanning old pictures. Sorry? Is there any place local where you can take old pictures to be scanned? I'm sure there is, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, actually, the photo. Uh, oh, action still ran. I guess, yeah, they still ran. I guess they are. I had a couple, uh, about three or four older photos. Restore by okay, good. And they yeah. did a good job. And also next month, our guest speaker, Phil Colombo, will be here to show us how to digitize and organize oh, good. all of that stuff. I tell my students you can photograph them with your phone. Wow. Okay, did you wow. see what happened? Did you see what happened? Wow. So, yeah. You missed do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it might go faster next time. Oh, so here is what I was talking about. Here is the output. Uh, current layer, new layer, new layer mask. I want to mask it a smart filter or a new document. So you can do a new document entirely and keep the other one. I'm just going to do a new layer. But um, so, yeah. Wow. So let, let me do that. All right. There she is. And this is, that's what it looked like. Wow. And that's what it did. 
Now you see her hair is kind of blending in. So the next one I'm gonna do is go back. And I noticed that the colorize was um, done. So I'll go up to the colorize. I saw that one work. Now this is kind of a weird one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it just flipped it in. I'm not saying I love the background, but look at her, look at her face. Yeah. Um, I thought this is new. This thing where it says um, uh, focal points. Okay. What I do quite often is I pull the saturation down somewhere. Output options. Uh, oh, right here. I might pull the saturation down a little bit. Um, you know, to keep it from looking quite so bright. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to output that to a new layer. Now, this one is a new layer, but if I go back to neural filters, and this might be what you're talking about, and I output to new. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Never mind. Okay. Um, I can output to a new. Interesting, it's not given. It was saying new color layer before, but it didn't do that. Oh, never mind. Anyway, there's there's my grandma. Um, and I can still go in and maybe um, select. Oh, you guys know this? If you're in a selection tool, you can just go up here and hit select subject. Did you know that? It's the best tool I've ever had. Now, it didn't work too well with her, did it? Um, and that's because it's her hair, she blends into the background. So let me go get my niece, this one, um, see how long she works, neural filters. All right. And I'm going to go to photos. I'm going to pull them. And I'm going to see, I don't want her face to enhance. I don't want her face to enhance. I do want that and with the scratch reduction. That shouldn't take long. Um, interesting because I am on my computer, I can output to um, a color layer, but this is not giving me that option. So I don't know if and it's it up a little bit, the gray screen, maybe it's further down. Uh, I, no, let me let me get the pro, let me do the processing. So here's an adjustment. You can go in here. It's noise, color noise, halftone artifacts, and JPEG artifacts. You guys know what JPEG artifacts are? No. When you have like a little edge around your picture that sort of separates your channels a bit, um, and some of those will take them out. Um, Noise and color noise, you know what that is, right? I always tell my students that noise is like when you lose cable and your cam and your and your um, TV goes. Shh. That's why they call it noise. Um, I'm sorry. This is I'm just a faster processing. She's fifty. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that uh, every time you, you do one of these uh, uh, filter uh, processes, a question comes up, says, are you happy? Or, you know, yeah, yeah, because they're beta. Uh, is it, yeah, so something's going back to Adobe. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, what, I never how saw. much is going back? Yeah, I, I don't think they pay attention, to be honest. I used to go to meetings every year in San Jose. I was a certified Photoshop instructor. And uh, they would give us beta things and say, come in and tell us what you like and what you don't. And I never, I don't think they paid attention to me. No. I guess I'm really asking, what I'm really trying to figure out is whether any of your photo information is being jacked up to Adobe or whether all of this is being kept. You have to tell them. It, it, it'll come on and say, do you want to tell Adobe? You don't have, it doesn't automate. No, I'm not worried about the question. I'm worried about if, I'm just asking whether any of your photo information is actually being processed. Oh, if you say yes or no. Well, I, yeah. How much of this processing is happening local as opposed to how much of it it's, might be done? It, it's all being done local. It's all being done local. Okay. That's good. Thank enough. you. Uh, yeah. Question, but I have used it 
can come back in and question them and I want to copy the picture and uh, for them to see what the true reference is. Okay, so in other words, if you express some opinion about it, it might watch it might ask you whether it can look at your stuff. Huh? And uh, you know, and send it off now. On the negative side, if I ever got the response, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people, this is what happened. That's what it was. That's what happened. Wow. Oh, so obviously it. it is worth doing that and not going in and cleaning all those places up with the patch tool and the uh, the other one I've used is um I didn't show you that the other one I use is the spot peeling brush where you can just go in and do a spot like that sure. which works sometimes and not at others you know all right so the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back to neural filters and I'm gonna click on colorize find it this should go fast this one goes really fast there you go now I'm not unhappy with that. Damn. Um, the reason I don't know if you've updated since I had, or if it's just working a little different. But um, I didn't like her her dress, so I went in and I selected her dress out. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, sorry, um, wrong tool. Okay, so I selected her dress out. I used to teach one night, um, I teach during the day in a Mac lab and I teach at night in a PC lab. So I used to be really good at knowing what shortcuts to use. So I do exactly what I showed you earlier and go to uh, somewhere and change the color. So I can do it with like the tent right here and choose what tent I want to have on our dress. And if I feel like I, it's a little too much, I can pull the fill down a little bit. Um, so you can you is you can select something out and either go to um, hue and saturation, black and white, and choose the tint option, or just do uh, a color uh, layer. From uh, and you can do it from the top. I do it from here, which I call the black and white cookie, and do the solid color. But you can also do this, right? You can also go to layer, uh, new adjustment layer, no new fill layer, and do solid color, <laughs> solid color, and just choose that. And then you go in and choose what color you want to do. So say we want yellow or we want, I think it was yellow. And it's kind of, you know, it's a kind of ragged selection, but once you do the blending mode, um, and then you can lower the fill a little bit. <clears throat> oh yeah, there you go. There you go. I just lowered the fill a little bit. So the color is, so that was just two ways you do the same thing to get the color. Any questions about that? You guys are, I wish I had you in my classroom. That's my question. <laughs> my students, you know what they do? And, and I've got a couple that do this. Oh no, I can't ask questions. I got to figure this out. And I'm walking around going, I'll help you. I'll help you. So I appreciate you asking because <laughs> uh, the younger ones have a harder time than the older ones say, I don't really care. Stupid, but you don't look stupid asking questions. Yeah. Uh, do you occasionally resize for, for the actual printing? I mean, you start. Oh, off with okay. Good question. Excellent question. Um, so we go to uh, image and image size right here, and um, this. Oh, this is tiny. But you see how it, the resolution is six hundred. So it was scanned high resolution. Some scanners you can do the output size, and some you can't. And if you can't do an output side, just raise the resolution so you can change it in here. But I like to say, oh, I like to say what I want the final output size to be if I can. Now, be aware what I said to begin with is when you scan a picture, it gets the texture of the paper. So if you make it too big, it's, it's going to 
but it's going to have texture in there you might not want. So what I'll do with this is I will uncheck sam free sample and I'll change the 600 to 300. So you know that 300 is, is um, printing, right? 72 is screen. Um, so yeah, so this is 300, uh, four by six. And what I did is I, um, I printed this for my sister because it's her daughter. <laughs> I printed it for her and uh, that's the size I, I printed for her and one of those little things. How many do you print? Who prints? Oh, good. What do you print? Well, I, I, I have a, you know, a 13 by 19 mm -hmm. printer. And Actually, like, I have I have a Epson and a Canon both of them. Both 13 by 19. What do you use your prints for? Uh, mostly for, you know, fine art photography and for, like for and ex exhibition. For exhibition and digital painting. Exhibition. You do digital painting? You said you did? Yeah, I have a 17 inch uh, Epson printer that I do for the art printing. Yeah, I had one of those that died. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a Canon and I went from 17 to 24. And I had to replace all the cartridges because I hadn't printed I had printed since before the pandemic. I paid off the The cheapest 12, 12, 12 colors. <clears throat> So by $59.99, the cheapest one, each one. I was lucky I found them on Amazon. I found a, uh, I found somewhere to get them because where I used to get them in Richmond, they, I called them and they said, you know, it's <laughs> supply and demand and nobody wants it. And I said, nobody's been doing this for two years. You you said you print? I do. I have a can printer for my age the whole process. You hate it? <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it comes out in all different weird colors. And um, I really hate okay. There are um, things you can get that would, you know, sync your screen and your printer. That's not me. <laughs> well, then the next time it works. Yeah. So, uh, I I just do it. I print it. And I say I like this fine, or I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. And when I lost my, I had to buy all the um, cartridges. I just kept not replacing one I should have replaced or put it in there to perfect. But I'm not I'm not that my colors don't have to match exactly what's on my screen. And you guys know this, right? You know RGB, CMYK, right? So you can't, you can never match RGB with a CMYK print. You just can't do it. So you have to decide what it is you're willing to settle for. And it's really important to do that. So those big prints you were talking about, they weren't all the same color. They should have been. Uh, I was out there because it was so huge. And well, I had them break up at school before the, before everything closed down. Actually, they came down the first of February. No, the first of March. I went on spring break, went to Iceland. I came home. You know, the day I came home, everything shut down. Everything. So that was the last time I printed, and then you know. I had to buy all those. It was very, very expensive. Yes. You know, the Lightroom got the same uh, tool there to change the size. Uh, Lightroom has an a, um, a download. It's a yeah. download thing. It looks like a little arrow up here. You hit download, and there's a thing at the bottom. You can set the size you want to go to. When you open it, like if you set the size on the bottom, just hit open, it'll open in Photoshop and whatever size you tell it to do. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I require my uh, students to use Lightroom to make contact sheets and I show them how to use it to correct images. But I, when I first got it, the Adobe people talked me into buying the first one and I'm like, damn, this is not Photoshop. Because uh, Photoshop to me is much more intuitive. Of course, I've been doing it for longer than my students have been alive in most cases. Uh, but Lightroom is, is such a good um, database to have. And you can correct things. You can do the sidecar. You can't manipulate. You know, you can't. And, and you can only do so much like cloning and stuff in there. But there's a lot you can do. And, it, and it's, um, but if you get Photoshop, you get Lightroom as well. For nine ninety nine a month, which for you guys is probably all you need. 
I have I do the whole kit and caboodle for some reason. Oh, I, I also I can I can send you this. I have a video of the first two things I showed you. I don't have the neural filters because I haven't done that one yet. But I have a video um, that does the one of the boy that was red and the one of my father at CCC camp. And I can I can um, send you that. I may mean, have it already, but you send it. Probably did. Yeah, sure. Um, during the pandemic, that's what I did. I took that summer and sat down and made videos of all my lessons for all my classes. Some of which I have to update now. <laughs> Or like the the um, selection tools, they came up with all these new ways of making selections. And um, God, I'll be in class. I'll, I'll figure something out at home, and I'll go to class, and I'll open it up, and it looks totally different. You know, it happens because Photoshop will do. I told them not to update my classroom during the semester because my students would get real confused. It's confusing okay. enough if you're not familiar well, with it, and it just takes a lot of time to, to get used to it. Well, other than going up to Maine, um, Scott Kelby, you guys know Scott Kelby is, he used to come to Richmond every year, and I went to every seminar he ever taught here. I went to seminars in D.C. and Norfolk, um, and that's how I learned Photoshop, and a lot of the lessons I do, I stole from those people. Uh, and I remember when you're going in and somebody said, well, you know, I can teach you Word in like an hour, but Photoshop is the black hole of programs. And that's absolutely the truth. It ne I've never stopped learning. And that's why I like teaching it because you use what you need. You're not going to, you're not going to go and do this unless you're doing restorations or something, right? But for me, I learned this so I can teach it to people. And that's why I like I like teaching Photoshop so much because it really keeps me apprised of what's there. For about four, about eight years, every other year for four years, I went to San Jose uh, and they would give us the beta and uh, give us give us lessons on all the all the whole Creative Cloud. And, and that was when the Creative Cloud happened, actually. And then they started making me renew every like six months and and I had to go to Adobe Max. I'm like, oh, I had enough of that. I have been to Photoshop World once, was in DC. And I'm, you know, there's so much you can go online. There are tutorials. There's just a lot of information out there. But I will say this to you guys, and I always say it to my students. If you have any questions, uh, Sue has my email. Um, if you email me and tell me who you are <laughs> and uh, say, you know, do you know this or do you know that? And if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, okay, I'm happy to do that. I feel like when I started with Photoshop, there were like three of us in the city who had learned it. And um, we, did, we did presentations and my friend said, would you please teach classes? We want to learn it. And I started teaching in like 94, before we had layers. We started layers in 3.0, yeah. I'm kind of the same boat. An artist for sort of sixties, and uh, when I worked at Vimeo, um, one convinced me to Photoshop like and didn't want to go and have to learn class the labor demands you to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, my final system that I had used, I could put in digital and then use Bridge and. Uh, and, and honestly, Bridge is a great tool, but it's just an organize your files tool. It doesn't do much. No, but, it's, it's, but the thing is, what I like about it is I can open Bridge and look at my files and I can figure out what I want to, you know, how I want to use them, what I want to do with them. Uh, it's, it's, I know people say, oh, I've never used Bridge, but if you open a folder and look at your little teeny icons, but if you open Bridge, you have pictures of what those I, what those look like, and it helps you a lot. And it gives you a lot of information. Gives you the metadata, just like um, just like Lightroom. I mean, it it looks sort of, but it's not, you know. And, and it works with your system. You have something already developed, and you can keep track of the pictures. It works with all Adobe products too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I, I want to put in one little because I got asked, and I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, at Brightpoint, we have a really, really wonderful art department. Uh, we have a certificate of, for photography, and we have an associate's degree. 
Um, what I teach is I teach intro to digital photography and digital two, each one or a semester. And um, it's called electronic darker, I hate the name, but that's the name of the Photoshop class. The um, electronic darkroom and intro to digital, I teach two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the days I teach. The digital two, I teach one day a week because I figured you know how to use your camera by then and you should. Uh, we also have a uh, studio lighting class and a commercial photography class taught at night by Travis Fullerton, who is the photographer at the VMFA. He's a great guy. He's a man, really knows his stuff. Um, and has been a commercial photographer as well. Uh, and John, uh, John um, Henley is uh, teaching nature photography and uh, one of the intro to digital. So that's the ones of us that teach those. And then there's a night class, uh, Lisa Helmstetter teaches um, basic photography, which doesn't count for the degree or the certificate, but you can go online, it's totally online, and she teaches that class. So just to let you know what we have to offer, if you're older than, I think it's 60, you can take them from free to audit, I don't have to pay. Um, we do like you to show up and do it, you know, and, and I have had people come in and say, oh my God, I can't do this because it's too complicated to learn Photoshop, because we've talked about it. It's a very complicated program. Um, so you're not obligated for money, or, but um, yeah, and they um, we're the only community college that um, Reynolds don't doesn't do it anymore. Um, and there are night classes. I used to teach at the Chesterfield Technical Center uh, at night, but I stopped doing that. <laughs> I, I decided I actually retired from there and went to um, Tyler. It's Tyler and. Um, said I'll teach two days a week and and um, I stopped doing the you know, night classes there. I just thought I can't I can't do it so much. I used to have to do everything I couldn't afford not to. Um, and this next year, a year from now, I was telling Sue, I decided to go on a cruise. I wanted to go, I want to get to South America actually. And there's the cruise to the Panama Canal that goes to Colombia, right? And so I signed up for the cruise in the end of January, and I'm going to teach my classes for two weeks from the balcony of my, my state. <laughs> on, 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 Get the premium Wi-Fi. Yeah, I have to do that. <laughs> but I, I wanted to do that. <laughs> oh, and so this semester, my friend Michael Pierce, who teaches watercolor, is in Paris, and he's teaching watercolor in Paris. Okay. So I'm thinking, if you can do that, I can do that, right? There you go. So you can retire and still do things like that. Either that or teach a class on the ship and we'll all sign up to go on the ship. That would, that would be fun, wouldn't okay. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they do that through the school. They, would. they t always told me if I had enough people that wanted to do a class, I could, you know, do a, or something. a remote class. But honestly, <laughs> I go there to you know, get away from my job. <laughs> Um, that's uh, any other questions. I, I'm sorry, I can just talk forever. It's just what happens. Yeah. Um, you are no, I never have. No, my friend Anita, she's a member yes. here. She's the one that showed me. She uses, I think, I think. But I, I never. And I have to tell you, there are a lot of programs. I decided I want to learn Photoshop and and know what I'm doing and and be very good with it. And I just can't do all that other stuff. You know, I just realized that all I can do is keep up with Photoshop and what I can keep up in Lightroom and just go with that. Um, it's, there's, there's so much out there. And there are a lot of really good programs on my laptop before I downloaded Photoshop. Um, I, I just had some simple little imaging program I could edit with. So, you know, there's a lot of them out there. I thought Tone Desk would be very helpful. Not bad. Yeah, your mural filters, a lot of that are copies of Tone Desk. Oh, yeah, they steal from each other all the time. Yeah. 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 When they were showing the when they were showing the the phone that takes the person out, I'm like, okay, Photoshop, you've got some competition now. You've got to go in and figure it out. You know, um, they made it, they they have animation in it, they have 3D in it. They should take that crap out, you know. I teach it, but I I think they should just be imaging myself, but they don't listen to me. So.
I stopped telling them. You have other things to do. I've got to stop. <laughs> Thank you, it's his last drive, right? Yeah. It has my restoration. <laughs> and nice to see you again. Yeah. Listen, it's not a, uh, a payment because we've been able to repay you for all the great knowledge you've given us, but it's just a uh, sure about appreciation. Okay. Small thing. As well as the Richmond Digital Photo Club. Okay. <laughs> Oh, right. Keep it hot for at least six hours. Excellent. Oh, God. In a month from now, I'm going to Australia. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Going on the Gan. You got to think about the Gan. It's a very famous train that goes from Adelaide to Darwin, oh. in the middle of Australia. We're just going to Alice Springs. Thank you so much. Yes. It's fun to just be here. When you get to Los Angeles, you've still got 15 hours of flying today. Well, we're going for Canada. Oh. 16 hours. Um, thank you. So you, you can use that check for the most of one of our <laughs> yeah, it, it, I might can find one on sale. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, people. And I just really enjoyed being here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, can you go up on stage for the rest of the thing? When's your, when's your next set of classes start? Uh, my classes will start in fall. I'm, I've got my classes in the first of or the end of this month, actually. I'm done with classes and then I won't start again until the end of August. Okay. What are you so teaching? If I to start up, I could <laughs> go to the class in the fall. I don't think we have any in the summer. Okay. I've offered some of them. And your website is ansavagephotography.com? It's ansavage.com. And it's A N N E with an E. S A D E D G E, like save an edge. Because, you know, why make it easy? <laughs> you know, you were saying something? Um, what will you be teaching this fall? All of those classes? Uh, no, in the fall, know? I teach um, electronic darkroom and digital um, base, uh, sorry, introduction to digital photography. So the intro to digital is 9 30 to 11 30. And the um, they've set it up like this. And the uh, electronic darkroom is twelve thirty to two thirty. Is that right? Yeah, That's yeah. Twice. There are two hours. Yeah. And That's I will twice. say um, twice a week, Tuesday take, and Thursday. Okay. When you take the class, most of the time um, they give you go Photoshop if you become an, uh, a student. Well, this last time I couldn't get it, and so I was glad I was I had my own. I don't know if it was a hang up or something. But I think they were cutting some. Of the well, they uh, this semester. Did you take the class this semester? No, no, not. not um, they yeah, they do allow the students they can have that you can download and use Photoshop with your student ID for yeah. the semester. I had tried in the class, and semesters. they allow, they they only have so many licenses, and so they usually give them to classes that you use them in, and it's been really good for me because I've been doing homework. Where before I could only do things in class. Yes. So we can actually go a little faster, is what I'm saying. You know, they have the information on how to do stuff. And then I can say, okay, this is due next week. I'll give you some time to work on it, but then we're going to learn something new next class. 
So I move a lot faster and uh, it's good. It's really good. So I cover more stuff. Right. So do you have, if you have your own copy of Photoshop, do you need to download? No, no. If you have your own copy, I would just go with that. I'm not sure that the student copies are totally complete. I, I don't know. I had trouble getting in because of, they ran out. Yeah. By the time, but I had my own, and it was easier because I could, you know, I was used to my own gear, so to speak. It was just easier if I had my own because I did the, the 10 bucks a month. And another thing we do, which is wonderful for, especially for our low income students, is we will loan them a computer and we'll loan them a camera yeah. or one or, or both um, that, you know, they just go to the library and check these out and they can use them for the class during the semester. So we just bought these new R50 mirrorless cannons and I decided I wanted to learn it. So I checked one out and would take it on my trip. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I've been practicing with Good them. Good luck. High five. High five. Yeah, I've been playing with them for three months. And I'm still trying to do it. Well, I, this one, I can use my um, help, my long lens on it. I can take their little one off. And, yeah, my other one is a um, 60. So it's a full frame. It's real heavy, and my back hurts when I use it a lot. I want to put the light with you know, as you get older, your back hurts. Do they yeah. teach on PCs or Mac? I work on Macs, okay. but I used to, I taught for 22 years in a PC lab, and I've forgotten everything. <laughs> and so I, at home, I have Macs, I teach in a Mac lab, but I have a PC that was bought for my husband that I can go and look at. And I'm pretty good remembering to use control and yeah, I was gonna and, say and all different uh, yeah. laptop. Yeah. Sorry. Any more questions? I'm taking up your time. You're yeah. gonna share your nice images. I took this photograph a couple of years ago at the Lotus with the reflection. That was at the Chicago Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm. My daughter was living in Chicago at the time. I used to go up there quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh I really liked the way we, I caught the reflection that day with that lotus. Mm. This is um, the waterfront in Mantia. I was up there looking for a uh, sunrise. And uh, so I shot this one. This I think that was a three shot panorama, uh, 15 minutes before the sun actually showed up. I find that sunrises are sometimes best before the sun actually shows. I did this just a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, my wife was gonna make stuffed peppers, so I took the peppers before she got a chance to use them <laughs> and took them in and did some photographs with them. Is that on the mirrors one? That's on a sheet of um, polished black plexiglass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, this was just um, at the end of February. We went to Emerald Isle, and this was a sunset. The thing that I like about this is that you have a really broad, flat beach. And so as the waves go out, the beach stays wet and very reflective. And this time of year, the sun sets straight down the beach. The Emerald Isle is different than the Outer Banks because the beach runs practically east to west. And so the sunrise is about 30 degrees out from the shore at this time of year, and the sun sets straight down on the beach. By summertime, both the sunrise and sunset will be behind the beach. <laughs> we won't be able to get this kind of a shot, but I really like getting the reflections of the uh, of the sunset in the in the water. It's how they give you lead blinds and all the above. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and while we were down in uh, Emerald Isle, we took a ride down to Wilmington to the Air Lee Gardens, which is a nice botanic garden down there. And they have a, a pond there, and there were there's a blue heron and a lot of turtles and things. And I really like this turtle. I was able to get a real nice symmetrical shot with the turtle and the reflections on it. And this, I, I went into my neighbor's yard, took a dandelion. And uh, got some pictures of it. That was about uh, about a twenty-five or thirty-shot um, focus stacking for that one. And this was also 
focus stack, uh, but I had a, a life behind it. And so I was trying to get the, the detail as well as get, um, just basically have it uh, as a silhouette against the white. You do that outside or in, inside, Tom? Inside, yeah. I just had a, a soft box set up oh, behind okay, it yeah. so that it basically mm. overexposed it. I got a new camera and I was very excited to get it because I'm used to my Nikon D3300 and I got um, the Z62. And we just went on a cruise um, two weeks down to the Caribbean and I wanted to see what it would do inside. So it was great. It doesn't come with a flash as you may know. So this was just, you know, at the show. So we can go quickly through some of them, but just to, I was really pleased. I didn't have to do anything and it's a F4, I think it's a four or five. Uh, to be darker there, darker than it's probably on my screen. We enjoyed the cruise, by the way. It's Holland, America. And I, you know, I, I, I know I couldn't have gotten any of these shots with my other lens at all. So it was just, it was a joy. And there, I had a learning curve on it. I'm still learning a lot because it's all so very new. Um, so, yes, ma'am. Um, what, what kind of shutter speed were you using? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh no, I don't think it was. It wasn't um, so low that I to bring in light. No, it was the ISO. These look great. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't really have to do. It was more for the action. I just cranked up the light myself. So yeah. Extreme. No, no, it's not because I didn't really have to. Do. So it was, you know, it was great. Pulling away. So some outdoor shots. Uh, I, as probably a lot of you, you prefer natural light. And I had to do my intentional camera movement that Nancy introduced me to, I think last year. And I've just been crazy over it. I think those became, and then I think I have one more shot. Got that. So I love my Nikon, uh, my Z62. Um, it's just a lot to learn, different from my my crop sensor, but it's it's great. And you use your lens. No, I, I'm using the kit lens, and the kit lens is about four or five, four point five, and I'm like, dude, there's not going to be a lot of bokeh, but I, you know, I had some other shots of wine glasses in focus and everything else not in focus and all of that. So. Right, and you just got the one lens. Yes, so far, but I, yeah, I and I, I, should, I should have bought the lens adapter because if you buy a new camera, if you're thinking of doing it, yeah, yeah, I mean, and I should have, but I was already in a budget and I'm like adding everything up. I'm like, you can get this, and, you know, and all of that, but, and I should have gotten, uh, but I'm using the kit lens, which is a 24 to, what is it? 75, whatever the kit lens, so, something like that. Oh, I would say, well, I'm using a D5500, which mm -hmm. I've had for years. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I mean, it's been upgraded to a full frame. It's so well, expensive. It is expensive. Better. I lens this too. Well, yeah, I've gotten yeah. that one and I should have gotten the lens adapter, but, um, you know, I got to practice with it and I'll, I, I'm hoping this will take pictures 10 years from now. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Thank you. Uh, this is a picture of the bridge over the James River at Scottsville uh, from a year or two ago. I was there one day and it was about 102 degrees, so I have a couple pictures in the left. <laughs> uh, this is from Cedar Key in Florida. Uh, there's uh, the, it was taken right off the dock creek that runs along the ocean there. Uh, I took this out of the window of a hotel I stayed in at Dana Point in California. 
And this is over at Tuckahoe Creek. Uh, this is uh, at a lake near Charlottesville that we went to on a photo meetup last fall. And another one from Tuckahoe Creek. This is Mabry Mill on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Like I said, this is one of three or four million photos that I have in the This is at the uh, park at the Mariners Museum in Newport News. And this is uh, just from the flood wall. I took this, it's on the south side of the James River near Smithfield. And this is uh, another one at Tuckahoe Creek. Wow. Yeah. Roger? Yeah. Did you have a long lens for that? I, I, yeah, I had 300 millimeter. Uh, if you've been to Tuckahoe Creek, there's a little observation platform and there's a log that's, that's still there that lays there that you know, birds and turtles and stuff get on. So that heron just happened to be there. So I think I used the whole 300 millimeter to get that. Wow. Thanks, Kim. Can you show me the other one first? Well, you mean I got on October 28th last year. Between two of this one's first. It's up on the 32nd. When I see this guy show up, and he's looking for something there. <laughs> so, <laughs> next uh, 30 seconds later, same setting, and I'll catch uh, the other one. Uh, the setting I use is uh, ISO 320. And F is a 3.5. Mm -hmm. And the speed. Is uh, the shutter speed is uh, one two thousand. I want to capture that. Mm -hmm. But well, the things that are interesting is I want to tell Tom. Uh, um, it's not given. Uh, several years ago, Tom, um, when you and I went, uh, met in the uh, strangers to the, uh, the flower, I complained and I said, I need it. Lower my camera. So Tom told me, there's a tiny thing for me. Here's a knee pad. I just pack my stuff, I go to the home and get a knee pad. <laughs> this is how I use it. Wow. The trip I have is with uh, Captain Mark. Uh, have a, well, I think uh, all of you know that Captain Mike on James River. The boat was long, but no way I can hold on 400 millimeter uh, camera <laughs> and a plus heavy full frame uh, uh, the lens and the camera and stabilize. So I just put on my knee pad. I literally in two hours was sitting on the boat or knee down on the boat. And then my lens is. Pretty much uh, parallel with the uh, bird heads. So waiting, set up everything, waiting. <laughs> That's it. That's why I said between two images, it's uh, less than 30 seconds. Wow. Sam said, you know, I have no time to do that. So once I set up, I think it's really precious. Oh, I don't know. That's why I have a and I did a whole bunch of, I did a whole series. Of, yeah. um, I went to, uh, William and Mary has the cross bus two weeks ago, they were playing high point. Uh, a friend lived next door to me for three years. And he played, he's a big star. And now he's a coach for the club team. 
we can kind of walk through these as I'm playing. But notice in the background, see that how long that guy's sticking to the back. He mm -hmm. plays defense. This guy's an attacker, midfielder, got a shorter stick. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so uh, the goalie is the ball is in the net. He stopped it. You know, or else it would have made him. Um, so the difference, there's less than 70 Division One lacrosse teams in, in across the U.S., but there's several hundred uh, club teams. Club teams practice two, three times a week, and you try and get there. D1 teams five times a week, and you have to show up. Uh, the schools give at least 100,000 minimum to the, the D1 teams. Club teams like these guys, they buy their own shoes. They got to hire the refs, make sure the field's ready, and use your own car when you get to the games. Now, William Mary has raised some money, and they can take a bus. And that's the big thing. This is the face off. There's usually a couple guys on a team who that's their specialty. They'll come out, face off, win the ball, pass to somebody, dart off the field, and somebody else comes on to, uh, to take their place for because now they got possession. They're trying to score. He's a defense. This stick is really, really long. He can poke people from a greater distance. For a <laughs> I've but seen that. I, I, took, uh, I, I took about 200 pictures that day, and I'm happy with like 120 of them turned out really nice. And in fact, the coach is picking them up this morning. But the one thing I learned with this, I've used a 300 millimeter lens, but the Nikon I have makes really big file sizes. And that to be able to crop in sports, all these pictures were cropped. You know, there's a, there's a ref in the, there's, you know, there's somebody over here, there's something in it. If you want somebody to be really, you know, the parents going to frame this one and put it on their shelf, you just want them. You want as, as much focus on the effort and the action and the people on the sidelines, background. So that's one one thing I really appreciate. Other times I just don't like carrying that big heavy camera around. But you know, here's where it pays off. I've seen these on TV, and it seems like when they're running downfield, they're whacking each other with the sticks. Oh yeah, and I never see a penalty call or anything. <laughs> you can't whack them if they don't have the ball. Oh, okay. And but, uh, in this game, William Mary was the underdog. First 10 minutes, they had about four penalties of just nailing somebody, knocking them down, but they didn't have the ball. Oh, so okay. you got to play without them for a minute or two, or something like that. Good old girls game. <laughs> they, they can't do that. Oh, really? Like, you know, smack them with the girls game. No. Ah, no. No. So, uh, I lost the fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go into a game this afternoon with my grandma. Uh -huh. I was watching the Duke Notre Dame game, game on TV last like, few days ago, whatever it was. And I guess the guy had the ball because people were, <laughs> you know, they were nailing him with a stick as he was going down the field. And I said, at least I got all the penalty to me. Yeah, you can check them. But if, and if, there's, if they're holding the stick out, the, the girls are trying to hold the stick in, and then you can't whack out. And then you notice the goalie. You don't wear helmets either. So they don't even wear shin guards, these goalies. And there's people who are skipping the balls off the ground at them. They got up and down, everything. I think, why wouldn't you? They couldn't afford them. They, don't, they only got the shoes. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. This is a picture that I took. I know uh, Peter suggested we talk about photos that we've taken and should we have taken or should we not have taken it. This is my contribution to that. I uh, took this, I uh, think, at the Chesterfield Town Center, uh, homeless veteran. And uh, I don't know if Peter wanted us to talk about that or not. Should I take this picture or should I not? Uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, I did. Asked him if I should take, could take the picture. He said yes, and I did make a final contribution to it, but I don't know if that helps. Uh, but as far as veterans, uh, which as you most of you know, I'm a veteran, and uh, home, uh, among the veterans, uh, they have a, a pretty high suicide rate, homeless rate, and uh, which they say about PTSD, substance abuse. And those who have been in you know heavy combat particularly, you can't just make the switch off after you come home. So I don't know if we all want to do some discussion on it. Should I or should I not have taken this picture? You asked, right? You asked if you asked, you uh, said yes. Oh yeah, I did ask it. The real test is when you don't ask them to take a picture of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Those are the questionable ones. 
if it's important to you, you have empathy for the character and you're asking, I wouldn't feel bad about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he gave him money, so that's why he's out of it. He contributed. He probably said, take me. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Take a lot. Yeah, five lots of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> not a party group we're here. Go ahead. Uh, we're like that. Uh, you ask him, that's great. He tells you he's a veteran and all that sort of stuff. How do you know that? I don't. You don't. And uh, got to pay for it. Yeah, I had some guy do the same thing with uh, oh, I was in Vietnam, and he could have been my kid. I was in Vietnam, okay, he could have been my kid, so we weren't even supposed to be, God. but he was trying to get that. And then the, the second thing, we were like, why don't you just turn him a little bit to the sides so and get the sunlight on it? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's uh, you're gonna go through all that. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we we'll are stand in the traffic too, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, then you step off and maybe we'll have to <laughs> But let me ask you, Ray, what uh, what motivated you to take the photograph of him? That's a good question. I was actually in class at John Tyler at the time, Jay's called Bright right now. And uh they asked us the this is the intro class, intro because it was photography. And asked us to do some street photography. Uh, some where you take the picture without asking, yeah. and others where you ask. And this was mine for the project. A picture I asked if I could take it. Yeah. So that was it. Story. So you you took the picture for your class? Yeah, I did. Okay. I you know personally I don't have any problem taking pictures of anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the courtesy is to to ask it or whatever. And I found that when I asked, I asked the polls people on, they want to pose, they want to play, you know, to do that. And then, uh, you know, my challenge is get a decent picture of it. <laughs> yeah, if he yeah. wants it natural, you do that. Anyway. Now, if you've been to Ashland, you might have been there, a little town, you see Mr. Jingles riding around. Yeah. I, I figure if somebody's presenting themselves that way, I really shouldn't need to ask them. But I asked them anyway. And I asked them anyway. But um, the other concept, people dress up like newborns. I don't need to ask them. Yeah. And also, uh, one of the things they asked us to do for this. Session, I guess, to show some reflection. I noticed some of you all did show some reflection. So, this is what the downtown Richmond reflections in the buildings. Ray, did the guy come out of the change center and tell you to stop taking pictures? No, I've had that happen to me yeah. several times. Okay, right there. Really? Yes. No, I didn't have any problem at all. Yeah, but if you don't do the street, you, you leave them. If you're if you're on their property, oh, they can they can ask you for that. And I don't know if you ask for it. If you are, yeah, you know, private property that you got, but if you're on the street, they can't. Yeah, that looks really good in black and white. Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah, black and white reflections. Yeah, and that's what they asked us to do. This is the. Uh, Institute of uh, Contemporary, contemporary mm -hmm. Art. That's the right, the VC campus. Is that yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. More reflections. And this was uh, several years, a bunch of years ago, when we had the Super Bowl over the uh, 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 Powder, Powder Lake. It was cold as I don't know what out there, but. I like the reflection of the lights and everything in the water. And uh, this is, I guess I should, I volunteered to do it. Uh, my uh, granddaughter, of course, you know, you know, I'm not, we're raising. That's her in the orange shirt there. And these are uh, kids from the uh, special ed class. They call it uh, the Medford Games. Uh, same thing as Special Olympics. 
uh, went up to one of the games. This is a Manchester High School at Clover Hill. And uh, took, took a bunch of shots and actually gave them a book. But my daughter, she had a, my granddaughter, a passion for, I guess you say, special needs children. And one of the classes she's taken is uh, uh, Teachers of the Future. And that's this is part of that class in high school. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I guess a shout out to Paul there, <laughs> get the shot of the ball going through the basket. Yeah, yeah. 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 And also the uh, Richmond Photography and Media uh, Group went down to Keystone Music Museum. I think Kim was seeing uh, Roger. And that thing is huge, like over 200 cars and things displayed. That's an old 1957 Nash. It said here, a massive purpose and tractor. Uh, reason I took this one is uh, we, my, my dad and I, we have like a 76 acre farm in Halifax County, raising tobacco and so forth. That's the tractor we had. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Okay. But they had tractors in there that's been everything's been restored to look brand new. Tractors, trucks. Uh, got soda bottles, all the Chesterfield tobacco, paraphernalia, Coke bottles, and so forth. Uh, just it is phenomenal. The little runs from there, very yeah, nice. Yeah, so it's good. Like this. Yeah, yeah. It's in Columbia Heights. They go on down. Exit 10. Exit 10. Exit 10. Turn the key and then it would run. This is one of mine. This is from the uh, <coughs> Duncan Field uh, Park Graveyard. Reflection mirror. Cool to get a mirror thing where you don't have yourself or the camera. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to do a lot of times. This is one of the lakes where I think it's Echo Lake, I believe, is where this was taken. There's a caption there, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and this is the same, this is at Chris Green Park. And in fact, there's Roger. Up there on the hill. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> right up there. Here's Rob. Must be a vampire, but it's not reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I didn't know if you picked that up. Oh, that's me. Uh, reflections. That's a very old picture. I didn't get out to take anything new, so I went through my old files. That was my granddaughter many years ago. She's a junior in college now oh, uh, at the Georgia Tech Industrial Design. She was always into that's in Chicago. The, the, the bean. Yeah. 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 First shot. The bean. That's a good shot. Yeah. Reflections um, to the fall the water. This was on my deck. Um, reflections. I was having um, uh, my, my tea out in the morning and I just Look down. And we had a glass table, and I said, and I ran in and got my my camera. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, that's it. Uh, Ginter reflections in the in the window. Mm -hmm. Downtown reflections. Yeah. Downtown reflections. That's in Lambertville. Um, I took that picture many times and never came out. One day, I guess the light was, was right. Um, there's this 
brick building right along the, the, the creek, the stream there. And I, I finally got it right. Downtown by uh, Tredegar behind there. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> this, this was this was a uh, I do a lot of bird photography and this was a bird that I saw down at Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge down in North Carolina. I like I like sometimes getting reflections where you can't exactly tell, you know, where the uh, where the water begins or ends. So that's that one. And these colors are not coming out very vibrant on, on here, but anyway, this was a reflection of trees at Tucko Creek Park and, and a little green in the foreground. And this was there also on a very, very overcast day and everything was perfectly still as you can see. What's um, the brown thing down in the lower right? Um, a, the like a broke off tree. Oh, and this was at uh, near Charleston, and I'm sorry the color got muted, but um, because it it's really a kind of a nice vibrant blue green, and um, I liked the fact that that you can see the bird and its reflection and its shadow all at the same time. Yeah. And it's white. Green. Oh, and this was a Dutch Gap. Um, I was trying to take pictures of these little birds, those little brown birds that are called Wilson snipes. But I thought it was interesting seeing the reflection of the um, of the vegetation too. Right, printed it not here. Or gone. Yeah, that was the Lewis Ginter, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think you got an award for that one. Nice. You got an award for that one? Yeah, that was oh. that one of prize down at uh, Crossroads, I believe. Oh, Galaxy Pond, probably. Let's hope it's Galaxy. Did you ask for permission? You're good with the guy. Yeah. Looks like it's a dam. Oh, this is Peter. Peter Black. Yeah. Was it? You look like Peter in pictures. Yeah. That's it. Here, I hope it was a beer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great rest of the month. We'll see you next next time. Oh, oh. 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 Yeah, 